Sweetheart, we are out in paradise. Yes, we are. Oh. Pensacola Beach. Pensacola Beach on a kayak, getting ready to go on a little tour up in this estuary close by. And uh, just so much fun. You need to get out and enjoy all of our great Gulf Coast, what it has to offer. So much beautiful creation to enjoy. Hey, listen, you're gonna enjoy tonight's Coast Up Close. We're gonna have, sweetheart, an amazing uh, interview. Melissa Tate has an uh, incredible story. Uh, she came from Zimbabwe to this country, an amazing perspective, an author. You're going to hear that story. Yeah, I'm excited to hear that. Yeah. Plus, we're going to have Family Promise of Baldwin County and yeah. what they're doing to uh, alleviate homelessness to especially children yeah. that are yeah. very vulnerable to. Uh, so yeah. we need to get going. Yeah, let's, go. let's go. Hey! Yeah, this is awesome. Hopefully we'll see some crabs, some fish. Yeah, Beverly thinks she beats me, but I just literally let her get ahead to make her feel better. Happy life, happy life. Just uh, the way it is. But we all know the truth. So Family Promise is a organization that serves homeless families in Baldwin County. I like to think of it as a safety net for families. When they do not have a support system within their own family or their own church home, they can come to us and we can provide them a safe place for them and their children and help them to return to stability. Family Promise started over 35 years ago in New Jersey, in Summit, New Jersey, when a wonderful woman named Karen Olson saw the need of homeless families in her community, Summit, New Jersey, and she said, hmm, how can our churches be a part of solving this problem? They sit empty most of the week, and can they share that space that's been entrusted to them through God, through this beautiful building for them to live out their faith, to share that space with families. So the model of Interfaith Hospitality Network is where families who are experiencing homelessness sleep in churches one week at a time. So for one week, they're at one church. The next week, they go to another church. And kind, loving volunteers become the hands and feet of Christ as they are serving the families that are experiencing homelessness. Yeah. And we began here in Baldwin County in 2008. We um, adopted the, the model and knew that we needed um, a shelter for families here in Baldwin County. The families that we serve in Family Promise are in a situation. Being homeless is not who they are, it's a situation they happen to be in. So when we all, even when I started working at Family Promise, I had a stereotype of homelessness. I thought about the person who, who you know, panhandles, who um, is dirty, who might steal food to survive. So 85% of the homeless in America are chronically homeless people. They have serious mental health issues or they have addiction issues. Family homelessness is a very different type of homelessness because it could be something as, as something that a family experiences when they've lost a job and then they didn't, couldn't pay the rent and then they're getting evicted. Or it could be somebody's car broke down, they couldn't get to work, they lose their job, they have to start all over, they don't have a church family, they don't have family who can help them through that financial um, situation so it's a it's it's a very different picture than what many of us have when we think about homelessness I lost my job and I didn't have enough to end up paying my rent and that being said I ended up I lost my place and 
that's when I had to get on Google and look up for the shelter to see if I could find some help. The need has been pretty consistent over the years, but when COVID happened in 2020 and our churches shut down, it shut down our shelter program. But what we were able to do is this beautiful building that we're in today is our day center. Um, we call it the Family Promise Impact Day Center. We were able to host two to three families in this building and we never stopped serving. But typically we can serve four families in our shelter rotation model with our churches, but we were able to do that. We have a real need for, and I don't even like to word, use the word affordable housing, I like to call it workforce housing, because all of families in our program work. They all work full time. They are all, you know, ready to return to stability with their families and finding that housing that's not going to be 50 and 60% of their take home pay you know, is really getting difficult. In October of 2021, Clayton Homes donated their 10th um, brand new single wide, three bedroom, two bathroom house to Family Promise of Baldwin County. Each year, Clayton Homes chooses three Family Promise affiliates and we were blessed to receive one last year. We decided to use this home as a transitional house, and that is a time where families can have those extra three to four to six months to get back on their feet, attain a certain goal, so that they, when they move out into their new home, that they will have stability going forward. So right now we have a mom with her two kids living in this home. She's getting ready to graduate. She's actually off to work right now, and um, it's really beautiful inside. And the reason that I love the ministry of Family Promise is that we're not just serving families who are in need of a place, a safe place for them and their children. We're also providing an opportunity for the faithful in our churches to experience what it means to be Christ to others and to be able to share and witness. And so I will say this, we, can, we do not require our families to attend Bible studies. They are, not, they are not required to worship, but they are always invited. And when a family comes to us and we let them know, when you go to a church this week, you know, tonight when you come into our program, you're gonna to go to this church, know that they're gonna be blessing the food that you all are gonna be eating. They're gonna ask you if you wanna bless the food. You know, it's gonna be a part of it. You're gonna be invited to partake in any of the programs that are at the church during the week. They're gonna invite you to worship with you on Sunday. And we would like, if you feel so moved to go ahead and join them, you say, yes, I'd love to be able to sit with you and your family during Sunday service. Um, or you can say, no, thank you. Now, I'm gonna tell you this, a lot of our families that are in our program already have a church home. But if they don't, my prayer is that they will find a church home as they visit all of the different churches, 14 different churches, all different denominations throughout the time that they're here. And absolutely, it doesn't, it delights me so much when somebody does find a home and finds the love of Christ and, yeah. and turns their life over. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, it is a beautiful thing and it happens all the time. I've been in two churches and going on three weeks. It's, it's been pretty good. They, I mean, get to meet new people. They end up, they basically watch after all the kids and everything. And that's the main thing about it for me, just to make sure my baby's got what he needs. Not all of us are called to do um, ministry and mission work in foreign lands. You know, not all, but here's an opportunity for somebody who, it's like from a pastoral standpoint, it gives our churches an opportunity to introduce people in a very comfortable place, their own church home, a way to do mission work. And, and to look at the week of hosting as a mission week. And just like you were leaving on a trip to go to South America, you know, the pastor will invite everybody who's signed up to volunteer that week to either make a meal or eat dinner with the families or spend the night, pray over them and the work that they're doing that week. And so it really is beautiful. We've been a host church for Family Promise for many, many years, and it has brought us so much joy. And uh, it's, of course, 
deeply rewarding to our people as they're able to offer practical hands-on kind of ministry. I think that must be true for every church family that takes part in Family Promise. We just come out of this with a lot more enthusiasm for doing the work of Christ generally. I have had fathers thank us with tears in their eyes for providing a place for them. It has made our ministry better, and we are so grateful for this opportunity. Um, we need more churches involved. We always need more volunteers. Uh, volunteers are the lifeblood of our agency and our um, and our mission, and we need we need those people who are who love to help families and work with children, sit down at the table and have meals with them, and and. Uh, help them have a place to sleep at night and um, we need as many churches involved as possible to make that happen and continue um, our mission. Um, St. James Episcopal Church in Fairhope blessed Family Promise with this beautiful shower trailer. They wanted to be able to provide hospitality of showers at their church even though they didn't have showers so they bought this beautiful shower trailer and in it we have two showers and so we pull this up to a church and the families before they head to bed at night can get a nice shower and um, feel refreshed and get ready for the next day. We're blessed to have four affiliates in, in Alabama. We have one in Birmingham, they're our oldest, Montgomery, our second one. We have one in Mobile and we have the Baldwin County affiliate and we have a, an affiliate in Santa Rosa, just north up in Milton. And we're so excited that we are adding a new one in Escambia County, Florida, which is Pensacola. And there is a core group of people who are working very hard. I believe they're gonna be opening before the end of 2022 in serving families in Escambia County. Yeah. So for anybody who would like to contact us, um, our website is familypromisebc.org, like Baldwin County. And our phone number is 251-947-5641. I'm very grateful. And I don't give up easy. I don't like asking for help either. <laughs> but if it was if it wasn't from my baby, I wouldn't have asked for help, but I know I gotta do it because of him. We're very fortunate that Susan has found us and I just wanna say, Susan is you're going to move through our program so quickly because you're so motivated. You want to provide a roof over your head for your son and it's gonna happen sooner than you know because we just see it already. Your, your work ethic, you're just tackling everything we ask you to, to do and you're just doing amazing. And we're so thankful that you found us and that you're here. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm very grateful. <laughs> Yes. Well, we love you and we love Isaiah. He's absolutely <laughs> precious. <laughs> After Mama found a job, we found a new place to live. I miss my friends at Family Promise, but I still see them sometimes. When I grow up, I want to help people who lost their homes too. Well, we're having the best time here in the summer. Uh, we're out in this incredible estuary uh, in Pensacola Beach, just uh, by Portofino Resort. And so just an amazing place, kind of hidden. I don't think very few people know this even exists. So uh, great time for sure. But listen, you're going to enjoy this uh, article coming up with Melissa Tate sharing her powerful story from the African country of Zimbabwe. And she has some warnings uh, for us. You want to hear it. It's all ahead right now. We're so thrilled to have uh, Melissa with us today. and We're thankful that she's here. She's got a great book. She's got a great testimony. You need to hear what this young lady has to say. And our destiny and what God has called us to be, then our, 
our individual small efforts that we're doing collectively will really change the arc of history for this nation and change the direction that this nation is going. So thank you so much for listening. God bless you all. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm so honored to be with my new friend, Melissa Tate. Uh, she did a wonderful job as the guest speaker here at the Encounter Luncheon. Uh, and Melissa, thank you for taking time out. I uh, well, love this new book that you have out, <laughs> Choice uh, Privilege with a little X through white. And so, um, and you have, your background comes with a, a lot of perspective that you're able to bring to the table, so to speak. Melissa's from Zimbabwe, Africa. Yes. And that's in uh, Eastern Africa? Southern Africa. In Southern. Southern Africa. Yeah, okay. well, thank you so much for having me on. Yes. Great. So let's talk about maybe your upbringing in, uh, in Southern Africa. What was that like? And, and we'll just kind of start from there. Okay, well, you know, I was uh, born in a small town, but my mother moved to the main city called Harare okay. and I had a great childhood I mean Zimbabwe was a capitalist country a very yeah. uh, successful very cosmopolitan so I yeah. went to school with people from all over the world okay. so I had a really great childhood I never would have wanted to grow up anywhere else but in Zimbabwe okay but then something happened that turned your country in a very wrong terrible direction yes so absolutely. let's talk about that yes so um, cultural Marxism basically took over the country where, okay. um, you know, this narrative of black versus white kind of started yeah. to take root. And that caused an yeah. economic collapse that really devastated the country. And most people lost their, you know, life savings. A lot of people who were in the middle class were plunged yeah. into poverty. And oh. a lot of people had their, you know, um, pro private property seized. Wow. And yeah, wow. redistribution wow. of wealth. What is happening in this country is really what what happened there and that's why i see what's happening here and I'm, i've been outspoken against it okay. because i've seen the results of what happens when people yeah. are pitted against each other and really what it is it's a it's an agenda to racially divide and conquer america okay. and eventually for communism and marxism wow mm -hmm. now when you speak of cultural marxism uh must what do you mean by that i know marxism in terms of a political or governmental in, you know, a philosophy or, or whatever, but the cultural uh, Marxism, how, how do you define that? Um, I would define it as, you know, really getting into um, changing the, the way people look at their country. You know, okay. uh, when you look at cultural Marxism, it separates people based on a certain thing. Yeah. So in, in Russia, we found that they used economics to create division between the population. So it okay. was the rich versus the poor. Okay. And in America, because you know most people, even if you're poor, you have an opportunity to make something sure. of yourself. So the Marxists couldn't really use economics to okay. divide people here. So they used race because race is something that, you know, this country has a history of slavery. Yeah. So that's something that they brought in. Yes. So Marxism, just basically cultural Marxism seeks to divide people using things yeah. like race and also changing uh, the history of this yeah. country and changing the heritage and all of that. Yeah. And that would examples of, of that would be this critical race theory. Yes, Is absolutely. That? And certainly the BLM quote uh, entity, the movement that uh, came about through the tragedy of George Floyd was very much exploited. I believe for this purpose of dividing us. Yes, and absolutely. You, you saw that happening, didn't you? Yes, and that's what actually uh, prompted me to write my book. It was at the ah. height of the George Floyd tragedy, and I saw how the left really exploited that event mm -hmm. as a way to create this narrative that America is systemically racist and evil. Received a word from the Holy Spirit to write a book about it, to educate yeah. people so that people yeah. know that this ideology, this uh, critical race theory, it cloaks itself in Mm. virtue and cloaks itself in this idea that we're here to help the min minorities and help yeah. black people but really know what it is 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 a way to racially divide and conquer america to where black and white in this country will suffer because of the consequences and the main reason why we've been losing the culture war is because we have been looking at the culture war i mean fighting things like one at a time one issue at a time one person at a time, whereas the left has a, has a systems approach 
to the culture war. So they, they've created systems that work for them round the clock. And I think many of you will understand this cultural reference. Are you familiar with the, uh, the sitcom I Love Lucy? Yes. Do you remember the Chocolate Factory episode? Yes. <laughs> so in that scene, you have Lucy and Ethel. They get a job at the chocolate factory and their job is to just pick up the chocolates and wrap them and place them on the conveyor belts. And at first they're wrapping up the chocolates, putting them on the conveyor belt and everything's going fine. Then all of a sudden, the conveyor belt starts to get faster and faster. And the faster it gets, the harder it is for them to keep up with all the chocolates. So they're just picking up all the chocolates, they're stuffing some in their mouth, they're throwing some over their shoulder. And I think there's a part when Lucy stuffs some in her bra. I mean, you guys know the, you guys know the scene. The fourth character is the invisible character, but it's the most powerful character. And that character is the conveyor belt because it is driving the entire scene. So Lucy and Ethel are you and me, Christians and conservatives. We sit at the end of the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt represents the left and the systems they control. To put that into perspective, the left controls the education system. So they have about 50 million kids on their conveyor belt. So that means that they know that you and I are never gonna catch all those chocolates coming down their K through 12 conveyor belt. So they can go to sleep at night knowing that their system is working and we're never going to catch up with them. So the moral of the story is that we need to take back influence of these institutions and these systems and we need to start thinking of things as systems. Wow, that's, that's something very sobering. Uh, Melissa's book is uh, called, again, Choice uh, is What Matters, Not Your Race. Uh, it's the choice privilege, and it's what's race got to do with it. And I just love that, that it's the choices that we make in life define, define us. Is that how the background of this? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that's how, that has been my experience coming yeah. to the United States as a black woman uh -huh. with $300 in my pocket and a suitcase. Uh, and I worked hard. Yeah. <laughs> Supernatural provision of God. I was able to pay my way through college, graduated yeah. with a business degree, okay. worked hard to become an investment advisor, yeah. worked hard to build a business and yeah. really did well. And I just made good choices. And that's yeah. what my mother taught me is to make good choices. Yeah. And that's going to yeah. chart the course of your life. Awesome. Yeah. Melissa shared uh, three things that we can do about this, because sometimes it can be very frustrating. You see all this horrible change and our downward spiral happening. And we think, what can we do about it? Uh, Melissa shared uh, three things. Could you quickly sort of sum up those points that, uh, that we'd love uh, our viewers to hear? Okay, well, uh, number one is we need to speak up. Yes. We need to stop being afraid of being called racist or cancel culture. We need yes. to start having the courage to speak up and push back against this narrative, wherever it's rearing its ugly head, whether it's at school, at at church, at um, you know the workplace. Yeah. So we need to have the courage to do that. And number two is we need to educate ourselves yeah. and educate others. And yes. part of that is, is, is just talking to people, telling them about what's going on. Um, you know, I wrote a book that actually just breaks down yes. the complexity of how race is being weaponized in America in a way that, you know, is easy enough for, for a 15 year old to understand. Correct. And then number three is we need to, um, you know, just a bigger picture solution is we need to start taking back the institutions that the left has taken over, whether it's the education system, the media, the yes. academia, um, business, all these spheres of influence that we on as Christians and conservatives once controlled, but we basically abdicated our um, yes. responsibility to be salt and light in those areas. And therefore, the devil has just taken taken yes. them over. Yeah, so we need to good. reclaim them. Really good. Yes. That's so good, Melissa. Well, <laughs> part of education uh, will be a, a great thing right here for you to get is Melissa's book, Choice Privilege. And I assume uh, this can be gotten at Amazon and wherever books are sold, wherever. Uh, yes, it's at, it's available on Amazon. It's also available in Audible. So for those who like to okay. uh, listen to a book rather than read okay. it, it's on Audible and it's on Amazon and it's also on my website, realmelissatate.com. It's realmelissatate.com. Yes. And uh, it's right there on your screen as well. Be sure to check uh 
uh, her website out. She's just a wonderful godsend to our Gulf Coast area now. She and her husband and three beautiful children live here. And so we were just uh, happy that uh, you came all the way from Africa through <laughs> Kansas City, now here into uh, the Pensacola area. So, Amen. So Thank we're, you. Uh, we're all better for it. So Melissa, God bless you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having me. You're our pleasure. Awesome. <laughs> Miss Tate's message was so important because I think there's so much value that comes from the mission that she is on. And the fact that her testimony of coming from Zimbabwe and the inflation, seeing what's happening in our country right now. So I think it's, it's important for us to hear voices like that. Um, other people speaking out and saying, this is not right. We need to do something about it. And uh, as Christians, we have that foundation. We know God is in control, but we have to stand up and we have to encourage our government officials and leaders uh, to, to be that voice. I think it's really important that we recognize that the cancel culture that's happening, that the, the white privilege and all of these things happening in our schools are things she saw back in Zimbabwe when they were having their economic collapse. And to be able to recognize that, hopefully we'll have enough time and um, resources to get our people in the office to stop this from happening. Mm -hmm. So we need to start getting involved in politics as believers, in education, in media, in entertainment, and all these spheres of influence that have been taken over by the left. So I'm, I'm hopeful because I believe that the church is starting to wake up to this and it's starting to take that responsibility of being the salt and light in all these spheres. Well, we're gonna to have to close out this, uh, another great Coast Hub Close on an adventure at Pensacola Beach. And it's hard to imagine we're at Pensacola Beach. We're actually, this is the intercoastal sound behind me. And just over this uh, beach here is this estuary uh, we've been having fun exploring. So uh, we just uh, love getting out in God's creation. Uh, don't we serve an amazing, majestic uh, creator? And so I just implore you to get the family to come out. Our Gulf uh, Coast has so much to offer and we're in the heart of summer, so let's make it count. Hey, listen, I wanna thank uh, uh, Melissa Tate for her great story sharing it with us and giving us some good uh, food for thought, so to speak, uh, for where our country is headed, how we can see the warning signs, and let's just make a difference and be salt and light to our nation, to our neighbors, and our family. Hey, listen, also, of course, we want to thank uh, Family Promise and the great work they're doing in Baldwin County, and so excited that there's one in Mobile, now one coming to the Escambia County, Santa Rosa County areas uh, to help alleviate homelessness to uh, families with children. And so, so important. That's, you can just feel the heartbeat of our Father with that. Well, listen, be blessed. We'll be back somewhere along the Gulf Coast having a great time in Him.